Despite the undoubted economic and political success of classical liberalism, this success had also brought with it huge inequalities in wealth and extreme poverty for many people. This led to criticism of the classical liberal approach and a re-examination, or more correctly, a reinterpretation of the core themes of liberalism. And this reinterpretation is known as modern or social liberalism. So hopefully by the end of this video, we will have recapped on knowing and understanding the main features of modern liberalism. And at the very end, we will revisit the tensions between modern and classical liberalism. The four core themes in modern liberalism are individuality, positive freedom, social liberalism, and economic management. Individuality. John Stuart Mill built on the classical liberal concept of individualism to stress the importance of personal self-development rather than simply a crude, egoistical satisfaction of individual interests and pleasures. Mill promoted those pleasures he called higher pleasures, intellectual, moral and aesthetic sensibilities, rather than Bentham's utilitarian lower pleasures. Mill declared he would rather be, in a phrase with a number of variations, a Socrates dissatisfied than a contented pig, or a Socrates dissatisfied than a fool satisfied. Positive freedom. Green argued that the classical liberal emphasis on negative freedom, the removal of external constraints in individuals, had merely led to new forms of poverty and injustice as businesses and industrialists sought to exploit their freedom with little regard for the consequences or inequalities this had produced. Instead of individuals being selfish and egoistical, Green argued that individuals also contain some degree of altruism, a concern for the interests and welfare of others. He also argued that while freedom was necessary for an individual to realize their potential and achieve fulfillment, the classical liberal emphasis on negative freedom was only concerned with removing external legal and physical constraints on an individual's freedom. Green and other modern liberals do not deny the importance of negative freedom, but they would argue that sometimes, for some people, negative freedom is simply not enough. It only addresses legal and physical constraints on liberty. Whereas for some people, even when these external constraints are removed, they can have their freedom still constrained by other factors such as poverty, poor education, housing, what we broadly term social disadvantage. Modern liberals, therefore, seek to build on the idea of negative freedom and advocate positive freedom. Positive freedom is the ability to achieve self-mastery or self-realization, to have the freedom or autonomy to develop fully as an individual, which for some individuals requires something more than just the absence of external constraints. In effect, for modern liberals, freedom should be the absence of all constraints not just external constraints, but also circumstances such as poverty, poor education, health, and so forth. In advocating positive freedom, modern liberals clearly move away from the classical liberal concept of a minimal state towards what is termed an enabling state. An enabling state is a state which enables all individuals to reach their potential. An example of this would be the development of the modern welfare state, which provides all its citizens with minimum standards of education, healthcare, housing, and so forth. Modern liberals argue and defend the welfare state or social welfare on the basis that it enhances freedom and equality of opportunity, as it provides the basis for all individuals to access their true potential. The third core theme of modern liberalism, that of social liberalism, Again, we see as a move away from the social Darwinism of classical liberalism, the survival of the fittest, towards social welfare. The enabling state would also be a, a welfare state, which is a state which takes responsibility for the social welfare of its citizens through the provisions of a range of services. Modern liberals defend social welfare in the same way they defend the enabling state on the basis that it enhances freedom and equality of opportunity. Whereas classical liberals believed that the free market and a limited state, or negative freedom, was sufficient to allow all to have equality of opportunity, modern liberals saw this as insufficient 
if individuals or groups are disadvantaged by their social circumstances. When this is the case, the state should take responsibility to remove those disadvantages in order to allow individuals to have equality of opportunity alongside other individuals. The fourth core theme of modern liberalism, that of economic management, again sees a move away from the classical liberal preference for the invisible hand of the market or free market or laissez-faire capitalism and towards economic management. Whereas classical liberals believe that the market was self-regulating and should be subject to minimum government interference, in the face of recurring economic recessions and particularly the Great Depression of the 30s, modern liberals rejected this laissez-faire approach, arguing for greater government intervention, intervention during economic downturns in order to maintain employment and demand and prosperity. Again, they would defend this intervention on the same basis they would defend the enabling state and the welfare state, and that it helps to redress inequalities, for example, unemployment, which deny individuals equality of opportunity and the ability to reach self-realization or fulfillment. The liberal economist most closely associated with this type of economic management was John Maynard Keynes, and this style of economic management is known as Keynesianism. And in the terminology used to describe Keynesianism, Keynes would have argued that when the economy was flat or in recession, which would be characterized by rising unemployment and low demand, that governments should intervene to manage the economy by pumping money into the economy to reflate the economy and create employment. And this can be done through government spending and or to reducing taxation. In all of these core themes of modern liberalism, we can see if we compare them to classical liberalism, at the very least there can said to be tensions between classical and modern, or even more so to the extent that it can be argued that modern liberalism has abandoned classical liberal thought, and for example has embraced collectivism and abandoned individualism. And you can go through and discuss each of the differences or tension in turn, egoistical versus developmental individualism, negative versus positive freedom, a minimal night watchman state versus enabling state, social Darwinism versus social welfare, and the free market, let's say, fair economy versus the managed economy. However, despite these apparent differences, you can argue there are still similarities between classical and modern liberalism. Our modern liberals themselves would argue not only are there similarities, but they have not abandoned their liberal beliefs, they have simply built on them. Modern liberals would argue they still share the same values and have the same ambitions for individuals as classical liberals and are only adapting them to the political realities of modern society by providing different means, for example, the enabling state or the managed economy, through which all individuals can have equality of opportunity. As such, their goal, the ends, remains the same, but they differ over the means by which to achieve this. Modern liberals themselves would argue they only give qualified support for state intervention. They do not support intervention for its own sake. They share the classical liberal preference for rational, self-reliant individuals who take responsibility for their own lives. The essential difference is the recognition that this can only occur if social conditions allow it to happen. In a phrase used by New Labour, welfare is more a hand up and not a hand out. Also, all liberals share the belief in the core liberal values such as freedom, toleration, constitutionalism and rationalism. <laughs>